All right, let's talk about our studio. We're going to kick the tires of this program. We're going to be seeing a lot of this semester. So I'm just going to open it up here. And there we have it. All right, when our studio opens up, at least for me, I'm guessing for mostly everyone else too, it will generally load up the last project that you are working in. So for me, I actually didn't have a project loaded. And when you're not working in a project, you can see that it says project none up in the top right hand corner. I really want to focus on this project thing for a moment at the beginning here. You should always be working in an R project in this course. You can do it outside. You can you could not use an R project if you really don't want to. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's a really, really, really good idea to work inside an R project. Now, pretty much all that is, is a specific folder on your computer where you've decided to save some of the work that you're doing. And when you work inside an R project, it will take care of some thorny issues later on in terms of figuring out where particular files are on your computer. So before I get started talking about R Studio, I'm gonna load up a new project. And we remember we made our stats class folder. I'm just gonna call this project R Studio. I'm gonna create this. And so now we've got a new folder. Let's just see that for real. We've got stats class. We've got some folders in here. These are all our project folders. And our project, a folder with the, a dot r proj file and it's going to be a our project folder. This one's called our studio. Great. So let's talk about our studio for a bit. The first thing is our studio is a graphic user interface for R that allows you to do a bunch of different things. And it's highly configurable. First thing I'll point out, at least the way I normally use it, is in terms of four quadrants. Right now we only see three quadrants. So I'm going to uh, load up the fourth one by creating some kind of document, pressing the green plus in the top left hand corner. When you do that, you'll notice there's lots of different things you can create and you can experiment with different versions of these things. But for now, I'm going to create what's called an R script. And when you do that, it will call this untitled. And I'm just going to save this for a moment. And there we have it. It's been saved into the folder. And it's called untitled.r. Now this kind of file is just a plain text file. So I can write plain text in it. I can also write R code in it. We'll get to that later. For now, I want to point out the four quadrants. So up in the top left here, we have our text editor. Anytime we create documents, so we could, let's create our markdown document real quick. There's another one, let's save that. So now we've got an untitled.r and untitled.rmd. And uh, we can close them. If we close the last one, the pane, this top quadrant just disappears. But anytime we load up a, a document that we're working on, so let's say we want to look at untitled.rmd, just click it and it will load up in the text editor. And you can go in here and delete stuff and edit and save. Whenever you make a change, notice I've just deleted some things and this document turned red. So that indicates it hasn't been saved. And you can go up file, save, or the macro on a Mac is command S. I think it'd be probably control S on a PC. But in general, we've got our text editor in the left-hand corner. In the bottom left-hand corner, uh, there is a few different tabs, console, terminal, jobs. For the most part, we'll be staying in the console tab. Now, what is the R console? This is a place where you can execute R code. 
So for example, if you wanted to try using R as a calculator, you could enter in numbers, do some simple addition, uh, press return or enter, and it will compile this line of code and produce an output. So one plus one is two, and the output is two. You could do four minus six, and get minus two. Uh, three times, and that use the star for times. Um, seven divided by three. So there's some examples of using the R console. We'll see several more examples of this. Um, for uh, well, let's do one more. So let's say I've got an R script up here, and this is where I could be writing some R code. So for example, I know that this line, we'll talk about what this means later time, but this line produces a histogram of some data that's contained in the car's data set. So right now, I've just saved this untitled.r text file, and it just has one line of text, and that's, the, that's what it says right there. Uh, notice nothing's happening. Let's click Run and see what happens. So a few different things happened here. First of all, when I clicked Run, this line of text effectively was copied into the console. You can see it appears there now. And it's as if uh, what run does is copies it in and presses enter for you. Now, when, I, when you run this line of code, it actually produces this histogram. So you could press run or you could copy some code. I'm just doing that again into the console and I'm pressing enter. Uh, actually, it didn't look like anything happened there because this figure was already made. So I'm going to clear all the plots by pressing this broom and press yes. So now they're gone. Um, I want to run this line of code again in the console. Instead of, I could go up here and copy this and paste it in here, which I did last time by pressing command C and command, command C to copy and then down here, command V to paste. And now press enter. Another way I could have done it is if you're in the console, you press the up arrow and it goes back to the previous command that you just did. But the bottom line is that this left-hand quadrant here is a place to enter R commands. Now, as we use R scripts and R markdown scripts, we'll learn that there's a few different ways to actually execute R code. Sometimes it's in a code block. So, when you're in an R Markdown document, uh, there is these little gray boxes. And if you want to run the code that's in here, you don't actually have to copy it into the terminal or into the console. You can instead press the play button. And in this case, the output of the code goes into the R Markdown document. And you can view it just like that same time, uh, pressing play is like pressing run. You're actually copying this code into the console and pressing enter effectively. So the output also prints to the console. All right, so that's the left side. We've got our text editor. We've got our console where we run our code. On the right side, we've got lots of helpful stuff. In the bottom right-hand corner, the files tab helps us navigate our file system and you can gain access to uh, all the files on your computer through this search uh, area. I'll just show you a few different things I often use with the file manager. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna save this, close out these documents. And let's say I wanted to change the name of this file. So I could click it, click rename, give it a new name, press OK, and now we've renamed the file. If I want to see these files in my Finder window, I could say Show Folder a New Window and see it that way. Um, oh, just, uh, just to show one more thing. So if I was to, for example, 
duplicate a file here, uh, it's going to, you know, we're basically just looking at the contents of this folder. So anything I do in this folder, it's going to be reflected over here. So I'm going to delete this by pressing the delete button. If I wanted to do some copying, you can do that as well. So let's go back one directory. So now I'm in the main stats class folder where I've got these three other projects we've created. And let's go into test. And let's say I wanted to copy over uh, this file. I could click it, click more, and I could say copy to, and then I could choose where I want to copy this to. Say I want to copy it into the RStudio folder. All right, so various actions are possible here, usually by clicking on the file that you want to modify and then choosing some options here as well. When you make plots in R, you'll see your graphics show up here. The packages tab is for installing R packages. There's this is something we'll do fairly frequently when we need a new R package. For example, uh, to do that, click install. And if you're connected to the internet, you can type the name of the R package you're looking for. Uh, a really great one to load up. And whenever we need a specific package in the future, I'll make sure to let you know what you need to install. But Tidyverse is a great one. You just type the name, click install, and it will go through an install process. Uh, it's very useful to make sure you've got install dependencies clicked on because some of the packages require other ones to work properly and it will install all of them together uh, to make sure that it works. There's a help tab. Uh, you can use this to read documentation about particular R functions. There's a little trick. If you're in the console and you know the name of an R function, so for example, you could press the question mark followed by mean. I know that mean is a function. We'll talk about functions later. But if you did this, you're going to go and look up the documentation for how to use the mean function. You can also uh, do searches for things here. The viewer tab is for HTML. If you had an R Markdown document and you knitted it into an HTML file, you can view it in the viewer pane. All right. So in the top right-hand corner, we've got a few other things. We've got what's called an environment tab, a history tab. The history tab shows you the R commands that you've entered into the console in your project. So that's this can be useful for going back and finding things that uh, you might have thought you lost. Uh, there's a Git tab. And if you have initialized your R project as a Git repository, you can actually navigate uh, Git commits right from RStudio. I prefer to do that in GitHub Desktop rather than RStudio. Let's talk about the environment tab briefly. When we use R, we will be creating all sorts of things inside of the global environment. These will generally be what we call variables that store information. I can demonstrate this for you down in the bottom left hand corner. I've written A and it's a, a less than sign and a dash, but it makes a big left pointing arrow and a one. So this means put a one into the variable A. If I press enter, notice the global environment now has a variable called a that contains a one. As we learn more about R, uh, we'll often have several kinds of variables that will contain different kinds of things. 
and you can inspect them by looking at the global environment. There's lots of other things to explore. Uh, there's some project options and global options to check out. When you go to create a new project, you'll see, okay, so I just said, I wanna make a new project and it's asking if I wanna save the current workspace. I'm gonna say, nope, I don't wanna do that. And when I create a new project, you'll see there's all sorts of different project types here. And if you install additional packages, you'll, you'll get even more examples. And it's fun to kind of check out these things as a way to learn more about what R can do. For example, let's say you want to make a website. You could click this one. I'm going to do test website. Create project. And now we've got a new tab called build. And if you click build website, uh, we will render a simple website, which you can look at in the viewer pane. Or if you click this, you can bounce out the website and look at it in a browser window. All right, so there's a default template for a website in RStudio. Um, it is possible to change the configuration of these four panels. You can pop these things out. So here we go, if we, or wait a minute, this is, this button makes this console go all the way to the top. This one makes it go split. This one makes it go all the way to down. And you can do that on both sides here. I usually have it looking something like this, we'll see. It's possible to go in and change the layout if you want to mess around with this and to put things in different places, but I'm going to always keep this layout just like this. Okay, so that's a brief overview of kind of the different pieces of RStudio. And uh, in the next video, we're going to start talking about some really basic operations in terms of using R.